Okay, today we're going to look at uh, the problem troubleshooting a valve that won't come on. First thing we want to do is make sure our water source is turned on and our check stop is open. Notice when you open the check stop, water comes on for a short period and then shuts off. Uh, that means your internal parts of your valve are probably working fine. Uh, right now I see on this particular valve there was a small drip from the section here. And if I look at it, I can see that the shoulders are not put together right. So we want to fix that. We can turn the water off at this point. We want to relieve the pressure on the valve by connecting an operator that takes the pressure off the valve. Then we want to pull this pin and separate the sections. Pull this apart, inspect your rubber o-ring to make sure it's not twisted or broken then we'll assemble it getting the shoulders together well and reinserting the clip Turn the water on again and see if we corrected our problem. <coughs> As you can see, it looks like we have a drip on this end as well. well maybe not, it seems to have stopped. So the O-ring probably sealed itself. Okay, so we know we have our check stop on, our water supply is on. Uh, the valve doesn't run for these conditions. You may want to close your check stop again, pull the C-clip on the end of the valve. This will have pressure in it, so be careful. Now, the next test, we open the check stop just slightly to make sure that we're getting water through, through the valve. If we're getting water through the valve, we know the check stop is okay at that point. So we can reassemble this. Always check that square O-ring to make sure it's in good shape. Shoulder the fitting up, against, up tight against the body and insert your clip. Then we can turn the water back on. Okay, so this valve is operating normally and we know our check stop is good. Water's coming through to the valve. Uh, if the valve were not operating normally, our next, our next uh, test would be to Find a spare push button assembly. It's best if you had a spare. Uh, you don't, you can order this assembly. But you need a good spare push button assembly. You've got your water turned on. Test it with your spare push button. If it comes on, your valve is working fine. You can probably deduce from that that your problem is not in the valve, but in the tubing or the operator. This one is running on, it's set for a nice long cycle. And I do notice we've got another drip on our uh, connection here. At this point I think we would want to look closely at that O-ring and see what's going on with it. Check the sealing edges on it. Well, it 
doesn't seem to have any uh, tears or rips in it, so I'm going to reseat it. And making sure it doesn't have any uh, twists in it. Very important that it doesn't have a twist. We'll inspect the end of the valve. See if there are some burrs or something in there that are preventing it from sealing. And reassemble it. say that o-ring probably has some kind of defect in it that's keeping it from sealing so it's best to replace that with another one I'm just going to find another plug with an o-ring on it see if we can't correct it that way seems to be sealed this time. Uh, again, we want to uh, connect a spare push button to the valve and see if we can operate the valve with the spare push button. If we can, we can assume our problem is in the tubing or in the push button operator itself. I'm going to shorten this cycle here just so we don't spend a lot of time waiting for it to click. It won't come on. Uh, we checked the check stop already. We fixed a drip at the end plug. Uh, and we tried a new operator uh, on it. And without any good results from the new operator, we're going to disconnect the tubing from the push button assembly. Slide that tubing back and use our mouth to create the vacuum to see if that will operate the valve. If we're successful in operating the valve like that, we know the valve is working properly and we don't need to look any further in that valve. We know our tubing is working okay because we were able to draw vacuum, a good vacuum on it. So we don't have a leak in our tubing there. Itself. The next thing we want to check is our push button diaphragm pod. We want to take it off the push button discussion, check the rubber inside to make sure there are no cracks or holes in the rubber, uh, make sure it operates properly, you can push on it with your finger. Uh, of course, if you have a crack or a hole in your rubber, you need to replace this part. It's part number 17065. It comes with a little white compression nut <coughs> that attaches the small air tube to it. So you get the new pod. Make sure your tubing bottoms out the fitting. Slide up your nut before you make your connection. That's the proper way to make this compression joint. When you're finished, it should be held in there firmly. Of course, you mount it back to your button. Get your shoulders on your button and the diaphragm pod up close together. That gives you maximum throw of your push button. And once you replace the diaphragm, your valve should come on and work perfectly. In some cases, you can have a valve that's working perfectly, but if someone has taken the adjustment on the cycle all the way out, you can push the button and it will not come on. Uh, you notice there, if we push the button twice in succession, we get a little bit of spray, but the 
air is ex uh, or the vacuum we're creating is escaping through the timing adjustment. So we want to take that adjustment and screw it in probably a couple of turns and try the button again. Now we've got a nice short cycle. We can increase the length of that cycle by turning the screw in further. And I suggest a half a turn at a time just to get a feel of what we're de dealing with. And each time you turn it a half a turn, it should increase in time a little bit. That was still a pretty short cycle, so I'm going to give it a full turn. And we should see a nice and our appreciable gain in the time that it runs. And you continue doing that until you reach the cycle that you want it to run. Now sometimes you'll get into a situation where you have a push button that's kind of spongy and hard to push. Uh, if that's the case, you want to check your tubing, make sure that your tubing is not kinked or uh, pinched shut because a, uh, a spongy butt is an indication of that problem. Now the other thing you want to check is on your valve cover, the top of the valve, there's a small vent hole. And this vent hole has to be clear in order for the valve to work. So you want to make sure that mortar or some, some other kind of debris didn't get in there and close up that vent hole because as you can see here it will not run if I'm pushing the button until that vent hole is free. Once the vent hole is free uh, the valve will operate as, it, as intended. Needless to say if your valve top assembly here is cracked, has a crack in it, or one of these screws isn't tight, you're not going to hold vacuum in this servo motor. So those that could be another reason that it's not coming on and running for you. Uh, also if the valve or if these screws are not tightly fastened, you will get a drip between the air section and the water section of the valve. Sometimes it won't leak out at this, at the junk, juncture of the two pieces. It will leak out and follow one of these screw holes up to the top and drip from the head of the screw. Uh, if you see that, your water is getting past your separating cup in the air operator uh, by traveling up these screw holes and dripping out. Okay, that should take care of that part.